What's up everybody, this is Danny, and today I wanna to compare three of the best phones that you can buy right now. The iPhone 14 Pro Max, the Google Pixel 7 Pro, and the new Vivo X90 Pro Plus. Let's compare the overall designs, some of the best features of these phones, and of course, give you that camera comparison that you've been waiting for. So let's go ahead and just jump right in. All three of these phones are flagship devices, so build quality is something that you're not gonna have to worry about. The iPhone 14 Pro Max is classic in Apple design, very clean lines with a matte finish on the back, and it's boxy and glossy on the sides, where the Pixel 7 Pro is more curved and has that very distinguishable camera design with the two-tone. This is definitely my favorite colorway. And the Vivo X90 Pro Plus, I must say, is the most interesting in the terms of design. The contrast of material choices and the camera setup definitely catches your eye. The case that comes with the phone is brilliant too because it's the same color as the phone, so that is genius to me. It doesn't take away from the phone color design that you paid for, so I love that. All three phones have big OLED displays. The big difference here is that the iPhone 14 Pro Max has a flat display and it's the brightest at 2000 nits peak brightness. The Vivo X90 Pro Plus behind that at 1800 nits peak and the Pixel 7 Pro at 1500 nits peak brightness. They all look fantastic and you won't be disappointed, but I'm not the biggest fan of curved displays. The Pixel is somewhere in the middle where the Vivo is more narrow and very curved. The curved display definitely makes the phone feel and look thinner. All of these phones look great when you're watching content and they all have dual speaker setups so here's a speaker test to give you an idea of how they sound. So if you want my opinion, I think the Pixel 7 Pro sounds the weakest out of the three. It also sounds a little tinny as well, where the Vivo sounds the fullest out of them all, but the iPhone speakers are also fantastic. So let me know which one that you think sounded better. But if you're a fan of audio, then smartphone speakers are probably not going to cut it. So take your audio to the next level with this bad boy, the Marshall Woburn 3. Today I partnered with Marshall and they sent me this beast of a speaker to show you how easy it is to use with all three of these smartphones. There are a ton of Bluetooth speakers to choose from, but tell me if they look as iconic as this. I love the unique design touches this speaker has and it just radiates that rock and roll feel from the details of the physical knobs for volume, the bass and treble, to the push slider sound controls, and this amazing textured power switch. This is a killer design that is comprised of 70% recycled plastic and vegan materials. Of course, the best part is the sound. This thing is incredible and I can guarantee you'll be blown away when you hear how much space this speaker can fill up. It can get loud, so when you pick one up, make sure you crank it up because it can handle it. The Marshall Woburn 3 has been re-engineered with a new three-way driver system and the bass from the speaker is rich and deep. Mids are usually my problems with speakers like these, but I was impressed with the clarity even at low volumes. I was taken back by how balanced the speaker is. No matter if you're listening to rock, pop, country, or even classical music, I found with a few adjustments on the equalizer, all of it sounded fantastic so it wasn't just tuned for one type of music. Even if you're afraid of tech, don't worry, it's super easy to pair up with any phone, iOS or Android. Just download the Marshall Bluetooth app and it's ready to go in minutes and you can also control your equalizer and volume in the app as well, so that's nice. And what's great is the speaker already has the next generation of Bluetooth built-in, Bluetooth 5.2, so you'll get software updates over the air as soon as they're ready to improve sound even further, increasing range, fine-tuning audio sync, and driving down latency. If you want to take it beyond the smartphone for music playback, this has you covered. This is a versatile speaker. You have HDMI on the back to connect it to TVs if you want. There's an RCA connection on the back as well for music equipment and an auxiliary input also if you need it. So this thing is stacked. I'll leave a link down below so you can check current pricing on the Marshall Woburn 3. This is a unique speaker that is awesome for your home. Marshall also makes a ton of other products if you need something smaller or if you need some headphones that make you stand out from the pack with active noise cancellation. And even if you are a earbud fan, they have something unique for you as well. So make sure you check out Marshall products for some legit tech for all lifestyles and smartphones. When it comes to software, this isn't the place to go into that iOS versus Android debate. The iPhone obviously runs iOS and this year you get the Dynamic Island as a standout software feature, but these other two phones are on Android 13 and the Pixel is more comparable to the iPhone because it's Google's vision of Android and it will get more updates over time. And their AI features are just on another level with the call screening and voice to text features are just unreal on this phone. 
But there are some unique software features on the Vivo X90 Pro Plus that's not on the Pixel 7 Pro like this one. They both have under display fingerprint scanners, but the Vivo has the Qualcomm ultrasonic scanner so the area is much wider. So this enables cool things like quick launching apps with a fingerprint, which is awesome. So I think this is neat that you can pretty much open anything you want like an app with the fingerprint. I think this just brings something fresh to the fingerprint scanner. The Pixel 7 Pro though has improved a ton on its fingerprint scanner speed so I don't have any complaints here about everyday use. The iPhone relies on Face ID as the main source of security and it works really well but there's no fingerprint option for the Apple side of things at this time on their flagship phones. I could break down benchmarks but we all know that it doesn't mean much when it comes to everyday use. All of these phones are fast and snappy. The Vivo X90 Pro Plus is one of the first phones utilizing the Qualcomm Snapdragon 8 Gen 2 processor which will be in most Android flagships this year. The Pixel 7 Pro is using Google's own Tensor G2 which has been pretty solid for me so far and the iPhone 14 Pro having the most powerful chip out of the three with the A16 Bionic. But when it comes to everyday use, these phones are pretty similar when it comes to performance. They all have a variant of fast charging, but the Vivo is much faster where approximately in 30 minutes, you'll get close to 100% charge, where the other two will give you 50% charge in 30 minutes. They all have wireless charging as well, so that's nice. But again, the Vivo can go the highest at 50 watts wireless charging with the right charger where here it's 23 and 15 watts respectively. Google does have the biggest battery here at 5,000 milliamp hours and it does have fantastic battery life from my personal experience. It's definitely an all day battery. The Vivo I have not used enough to give you personal numbers but it has the next biggest battery at 4,700 milliamp hours and the iPhone 14 Pro Max has the smallest battery at a little over 4,300 milliamp hours and my battery life has improved with software updates. But if you use always on display it can have a pretty large impact on your battery life so now iOS gives you some options if you still want to use it but I personally turn it off to gain that all day battery life. But I can't say it's consistently giving me great battery life either because it just depends day to day. So let me know what your experience is like. So let's get to what everyone wants and that is the camera comparison. And hands down the Vivo looks the most impressive on paper. This is the only quad camera system out of the bunch with a main, a 2X telephoto, a separate periscope telephoto and a ultra wide where the other two have triple camera systems with the main, ultra wide, and telephotos at different links. So here are the specs listed if you are interested. But how do these perform in the real world? Let's jump in. So here is the front facing camera video. So let me know which one looks better and which one sounds better. But we're getting 4K right here on these two and Vivo. Still with 1080p in 2023, we need to definitely have a talk. We definitely need 4K on the front and it's definitely blowing out the background so when it comes to daytime pictures is going to heavily rely on personal preference as you can see the sky colors are totally different in general the pixel and vivo tend to create a more vivid capture lighter on the blue sky where the iphone likes to create a more deep blue the iphone likes to lean towards more contrast where the vivo likes to accentuate the highlights here like on this tree but it really does go back and forth all of these images have great dynamic range and details so it's really about which style that you prefer like here i can see the people loving the vibrancy of the vivo x90 pro plus a shot and even in challenging lighting directly against the sun the vivo does a great job of cutting those light flares out so the zeiss coating is working in the real world which i love to see the vivo does give you the option of zeiss natural colors so if you like a more neutral tone you can switch it on i prefer this mode so you can see that the sky is more balanced and a lot of times this does equal more highlight brightening though so there are downsides the vivo could use some tuning because in scenarios like this the overexposure can make the details a little muddy so i hope to see this improved in future software updates the vivo x90 pro plus does have the biggest sensor here so you'll see more natural bokeh or depth of field dynamic range also goes back and forth sometimes Sometimes you'll see the Pixel 7 Pro win in the best balance between controlling highlights and giving you great shadow detail like here where the Vivo just didn't hit well but here in this arcade scenario look at how the Vivo X90 Pro Plus is the only one with the dynamic range to keep all of the arcade machine detail intact which is really impressive. When the X90 Pro Plus hits though it really hits the food shots come out so colorful bright and detailed with retaining dynamic range in the background even with the macro shots it does the same and I'm glad all three of these phones have macro modes. They all do a good job with detail like in this wallet shot but the focus distances are different on all three cameras which is something to keep in mind. When it comes to pictures of human subjects the Vivo does like to brighten the skin which I think a lot of people will like but especially in portrait mode when it goes wrong it can really over accentuate. I almost look like I have on makeup here but the Vivo does a great job overall giving you not the most accurate look but more of a stylistic look like this one 
The skin tone I think is more accurate here on the Pixel 7 Pro, but the Vivo does look super clean in this one. The Pixel 7 Pro does have a significant crop with portrait modes, which can get frustrating at times. When it comes to zoom, it's a battle between the X90 Pro Plus and the Pixel 7 Pro. Every phone starts with a 2x zoom, but the next step up zoom is different for each camera, but the iPhone has a max of 3x optical zoom. But here is a 10x zoom for each phone. They all look very usable, but for digital zoom, the iPhone isn't doing too bad. There is a 30x zoom on the Vivo and the Pixel, and I would say that the Vivo slightly edges it in this scenario, and the Vivo can also go up to 100 times zoom, and even though it doesn't look very good, the option is there. The nighttime photos is going to be a lot of the same. It will depend on what you want out of the nighttime shots. If you want the brightest and the most information, I think you will lean towards the Pixel or Vivo. I think the extra shadow detail on the Vivo single snapshots really make a lot of these scenarios more pleasing, like here, where the other two crush a lot of this detail here. It does go back and forth, and that's what makes this comparison so tough to call. Sometimes the Pixel 7 Pro creates the more balanced shot. Sometimes the Vivo's more colorful and shadow boosting combination just flat out creates the best shot like this. This one is really incredible. But then in this scenario, the iPhone's color accuracy is so nice to see where the tree's green color tone is actually maintained where the Vivo just picks up all of the red accents and the Pixel is somewhere in the middle. When it comes to noise, all three of these do a great job of noise reduction. This is a shot without night mode. And again, you can see the three totally different approaches. When punching in heavily, just to see the noise pattern, you can see they all do a decent job with noise, but here in the same shot with night mode on, they all get brightened up. The iPhone keeps it the most natural, but I think the Vivo has the best in between. And when you punch in again, you can see that all three improved on noise, so night modes are quite good on all three phones. You can see this also in night mode portrait shots. I am surprised how flat the iPhone shot is here, where the Pixel is the best balance shot out of the three, but the Vivo looks and feels most memorable, even though it's quite oversaturated. It's a very stylistic look and it's really fast as well, about a one second exposure on the night mode portrait. The iPhone took about two seconds here while the Pixel looks fantastic, but it took about four seconds to get this pic. I had to take it twice because my son moved, so that's something to consider. Let's talk about video to end this out. During the day, they all look pretty great. The iPhone lands towards the warmer side of color tone, which is accurate since the sun is coming down right now and the Pixel is the most saturated out of the three. This is shot in 4K 30 frames per second, but the Vivo can shoot 8K video if you want that extra resolution. This is a challenging shot with dynamic range, but the iPhone does the best with the shadows in the dock to the highlights on the water. Stabilization is fantastic on all three phones. This is a walking shot at a normal pace, so let me know which one that you think looks better. The Vivo just looks so steady. It's almost gimbal-like. They all have an action mode or stabilization boost mode, so here is me running. And somehow the Vivo did the worst here, but the other two are rock solid, and the iPhone does have the highest quality at 2.8K versus the 1080p on the other two. I had to test out the night video because I wanted to see if there was a phone that could beat the iPhone at nighttime video, but when it comes to noise, detail, and colors, the iPhone 14 Pro Max still has the best video overall. The Pixel 7 Pro is really capturing rich colors though, so if you like that, you may lean towards the Pixel 7 Pro at night. The Pixel 7 Pro does have the most contrast and meters a little bit more aggressively here in this scenario so I wouldn't blame you if you like it a little bit more but overall the iPhone is doing better with the balance of shadow detail on the crowd and reducing the noise so let me know what you think I had to test out the night mode HDR video on the Vivo because I thought that could enhance it and it does so if you look at the people it's very impressive in bringing back the details of the crowd but it affects frame rates heavily you can see how choppy it is so I hope this improves with the software update so that about does it all three great phones. Let me know which camera that you took it in the comment section below, and I will see you in the next one. S23 Ultra.